Bye. What up, Z-Pack? It's your boy Z-Dog MD, AKA Dr. Zubin Demania, and we got What's Tom Heineberg, Logan Stewart, and we are in a very special place. Radiology Sun Steinberg Diagnostic Imaging in uh, Henderson, Nevada. They are a huge radiology group here in Las Vegas, Henderson area, and they have agreed kindly to help me find out a little bit more about my risk for coronary heart disease. And we've talked about this before. Look at these people coming on board here. 311 people. Hi, Ryan Newhoffel. What's up? Ryan's available to go live with us. We can't let him go live because he will break the internet. Um, we've talked before about uh, cholesterol as a risk. Is it a real thing? What are the subtleties of it? We've talked about high blood pressure, smoking, diabetes, all these things for risk. I don't smoke. I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood pressure, although I had a trace of it when I was younger. And what I found is actually changing the amount of carbohydrates I ate and things like that actually resolved my blood pressure as well as meditation, exercise, etc. But so the question is, as a 44-year-old dude, that's right, you dude thought, bro. I, dude bro, guy man dude bro, what, a, a, am I gonna keel over of a heart attack tomorrow? Because I'm a middle-aged man and y'all, y'all can't have the Z die. Because if the Z dies, he takes over the show. Listen, it's a strong possibility that Z has heart disease. I'm not a medical doctor, but I have intuition, okay? <laughs> and mommy instinct, because I'm a mommy to a fur baby, who's my dog. And <laughs> I know that this man is probably riddled with coronary heart disease. Riddled with coronary heart disease, or this, as Tom demonstrated. And so my risk factors are, uh, I'm, I'm a middle-aged dude, um, and I have a little bit of hyperlipidemia, so my LDL cholesterol ranges between 120 and 160, depending on what I'm eating. And That's we, pure death. We, it's yeah. pure death, according yeah. to Tom, who is not a doctor. And, I. and so as a result, we thought, well, if we're gonna get a finer predictive uh, idea of risk, if I crunch my numbers through something called the Framingham uh, sort of risk calculator, and this is based on data from the Framingham trial, which was this big observational cohort in New England, bunch of white people, doesn't apply to me. But I, right. I put it in there, and I found out my risk is around, if you look at my cholesterol, blood pressure, about 125, age of 44, mm -hmm. male status, uh, and lipids of uh, total cholesterol around 200, HDL around 42, last check. And it's been all over the place. We talked about how unreliable lipid measurements are, but let's just play the game that the man wants us to play. My risk, fact, my risk rate per 10 years of having heart disease is 6%. So in 10 years, I have a 6% likelihood of kicking the bucket or having a coronary event. Well, that made me think, what about screening? And we're gonna talk more about this as we go, but I have been reading quite a bit and talking to colleagues about the coronary artery calcium score, which is a CAT scan test. Since the CT scanners have gotten better, we're, X-ray, you think we're in some kind of like radiology place. It, since the CT scanners have gotten better with, with um, uh, sort of multi-row detectors and this sort of thing, you can image a beating heart in real time in enough resolution to actually detect calcium in the coronary arteries and it provides you then a score and it turns out calcium when you actually cut people open and correlate to the scans you or, or do an angiogram or do an autopsy it correlates that high calcium actually is often associated with lesions in the coronary arteries that can either obstruct blood flow and that can cause symptoms like angina chest pain or can be associated with plaques that ultimately rupture form a clot and kill you in the form of an acute myocardial infarction, better known as a heart attack. So, one of the ways you can establish risk is do the scan quickly, look at what your coronary calcium score is, and then we can talk about what those results mean. So I called up my friends at Steinberg and I was like, yo, in fact, hey, Danielle, you wanna say hi? Sure. Oh, heck yeah. So Danielle <laughs> uh, runs the like marketing side yes, of Steinberg. Yes, like the marketing side. That's right. And I was like, girl, I want a scan. And she was like, no. And I said, but I want to scan for me and Tom and Logan. And she said, are you sure you want to scan for Tom and Logan because they're young with very little risk of heart disease and you're going to expose them to risk without benefit? And I'm like, I thought you were a marketer. You're just supposed to say scan everyone. And that's, that was my test. And then I realized, no, they're not about just scanning people for no reason. They're about scanning the right people for the right reason. And I am only on the borderline. In fact, uh, Dr. Yamaguchi over here, hey, hey, what up, Mike? He's our radiologist on call today. I told him I wouldn't bother him too much, but we were talking 
came before this, and I said, he said, why are you getting scanned? You're pretty young. Do you have risks? And I went through the whole thing, and I am on the borderline of somebody who would get this. And But mainly this is for your benefit, ZPAC. I'm going to expose myself to a very small amount of radiation. In fact, the amount of radiation I might get from flying around on a plane for a while um, to find out a risk factor that then we can talk about on the show. So, do you guys want to do this or what? Should we just do this? I say, do do it. It. I say let's just stop talking and start scanning. Dude, by the way, you got the junk. Right? I got the junk. <laughs> you got junk. I got, got junk, junk in my in my man trunk, which is the chest <laughs> the chest right here. Yeah. By the way, you should also address the uh, Farmingham paradox, which the is uh, yeah. why we haven't uh, found aliens yet. That's a real thing. You know what? I, I come to Vegas, and this is what I have to deal with. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, like you got Dr. Mike, who's a genius, and then you've got Captain Pickalot over here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Mike, uh, Tom is a genius. I'm going to give him this genius, the, the phone here. Okay. There you go. Oh, yeah. Or Logan, even. Logan. Anybody? Logan's going to have good comments. And, oh, by the way, the lovely ladies of radiology. How could I forget? How are you turning the camera around, Z? Darling, who are you? Introduce hi, yourself. My oh, name's hi. Lindsay. I'm a CT technologist here at Steinberg. Lindsay is a CT tech? Yep. Hey, where are my CT techs at? 800 people watching right now. <laughs> you know, like, 10 of those are CT techs, at least. So everybody's always asking me, how come you don't give a shout out to the rad techs? I'm like, right here, right <laughs> here, here. rad here. tech in the house. Ready what's, to scan. what's your favorite part of your job? Um, working with you guys. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. The patients. The it's the patients. She, she gets paid to say that. She doesn't. She's actually just a natural. <laughs> and, and who do we have over here? This is my partner, Don. There you go. Hey. What up, Donna? Hey. You want to say hi to the Z-Pack? Hi, guys. How are you? What's your role in this whole shindig? I am the lead CT tech here, and I've been doing scanning for 40 years. Yeah. Do they even time. have this stuff back then? I was there when they invented CT. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I worked on one of the first CT scanners. You're kidding. Yeah, no. Were there a lot of concerns back then about high radiation use and those sort of things? They didn't really talk about it back then. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> back then, radiation is the future, see? Only We're all about recently. radiation. Yeah. Only recently. Yeah. So you started then in the, what, the 1970s? 70s. 70s. Wow. That's really cool. Thank you for all your service and for doing what you do. That and means that if anybody can find the inevitable heart disease that this man has, right here. Right here, people. <laughs> Dr. Mike told me that I had junk in my trunk. And by that, he means coronary disease. So we're going to find out. So what do we need to do? How does this work? Come right on in. We're going to get some history on you. Ooh, OK. So let me fill this out real quick. Uh, Nothing like some paperwork. Yep. Yeah. Do you have high blood pressure? No. High cholesterol? Yes. Any shortness of breath, chest pain? No. Have you had a recent stress test? No. And you've had no surgeries on your heart, correct? No, all have been on my anus. Okay. <laughs> Any family history of heart disease? Yes. Okay. And are you a smoker? No. Have you ever smoked? I used to have like one or two cigarettes in medical school on the porch. So why don't we say past? Yeah. Very light. Light. Social smoker. All right. Let's get you on the table. And we'll get this done. It's very quick and easy. I love it. No now, pain. this is not an MRI machine, so there's no magnets. No. I can have metal. It is an actual x-ray machine. All right. We want your head on the pillow. You can lie on your back. Can I keep my tootsies on? Yep, you yeah. can. Up. Oh, yes, ma'am. All right. Hey, that's my name. Yep. I could be Do a Miz. A favor, undo your shirt. Oh yeah. Here you go. Logan, are you getting this? I am. Okay, ladies, here we go. By the way, Alexander Wu says Donna is a legend. Oh wow. Wow, <laughs> I've been trying. Oh my God. To figure out my coronary risk factors. Oh no, it's sexy, Z, you guys. Oh, I haven't even manscaped for this, guys. I didn't know. Oh, look at that. I'm getting leads. Yeah. I'm getting leads. Four leads. Hey, girl. <laughs> How many viewers we got, Logan? Uh, 1K. 1,000. 1,000 people are 1, watching people me. 1,000 people want to see you shirtless. You know what? Do you, you, don't want, says, you don't uh, want this. Nikki says, take it off. Well, yeah, the pants come off. Yeah, the pants are nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't mention that, Dr. Mike. <laughs> All right, are you ready? I'm this born ready. Right Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Got a heart rate. Z's not dead. Let's pop up with the pulse here in just a minute. We're sure he's got one. 68. 
All right, so these are pretty quick. Just I love you, bro. Less than five minutes, okay? I love you. you got I, this. If I die, you're gonna be okay, Z Dog MD. <laughs> if I die in the scanner, Tom, I want you to take none of my stuff. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> By the way, you have some nice chest pubes, man. Hey, you know, <laughs> there's at least three of them are white. All right, let's do this. All right, hands up above your head, rest them back on the pillow. I am from audio. The machine's going to talk to you, and it's going to ask you to take a breath in and hold it, and then it'll tell you when to breathe normal. There's about four breath holds. The longest one's about 17 seconds, and it feels like it's forever. I love it. Okay, so just hang tight. We'll be done in a couple minutes. Thank you, darling. So we're about to find out if Z-Dog MD has the heart disease. He's in there screaming like a little girl right now, okay? He doesn't like confined spaces, I know. It's pathetic. Sherry says stop talking, Tom. You may normally. Joe asked sandals with jeans, really. <laughs> Take a breath in and hold it. You may breathe normally. Get in tighter on the images, Lou. Just don't be in Donna's way. Sorry, Donna. We're good. Is this the worst chest you've ever seen? Hands down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Take a breath in and hold it. <laughs> kind of got a little heart. <laughs> you may breathe normally. Let's look at this. Let's look at the images. I'm curious. Take a breath in and hold it. That's it. That's the whole scan. All done. Woo. All right, bring your arms down, sir. We're all done. That was fun. It starts spinning around, easy. and you're like, "Am I dying in here? Am I gonna die in here? <laughs> oh my god, my chest pubes." You don't need those. It's okay. Oh, that was awesome. I did it for me for just a minute. Yes, ma'am. That was uh, that was really fun, actually. It's like take a breath in, <laughs> then hold it. See, everybody says you have a small heart. <laughs> Let your legs up. Maybe at Christmas it'll grow two sides. Can I hop off? <laughs> yes, you're all done. Oh no, Jenny saw a white spot on your lungs, bro. You don't die, Z. Yeah, he's dying. <laughs> no, no, that's my teratoma. He's my friend. He's got a tooth in there. I've had him since I was young. I don't have a teratoma. Do you have a white spot on my lungs? What are you doing, Tom? <laughs> Am I dying? You Dr. Mike, dying, am I dying? Sir. What's going on? Oh, wow. Diana Brooks says, amazing how fast this is. It it's was really, really fast. really quick and entirely comfortable for the patient because you just lay there, it's talking to you in this very nice robotic voice. It's like Siri, but not a bitch. And it's like, yeah, because she's mean. Siri's mean. Siri won't answer my question. And she's like, uh, take a breath, hold it, breathe normally. And that's all the instructions that you have. And then you hear the thing whizzing around you. And you see a little thing that says, do not look into the laser. And of course, I looked right into the laser. Whitney says, this was without contrast. Yes, no contrast. And let's talk about that for a second because CT 
coronary angiography, where you're actually scanning inside the vessels carefully and reconstructing it, that requires iodinated contrast, which adds an element, a very small element of risk, and maybe a little more radiation. So that's not gonna be a great screening test for someone who doesn't have symptoms and not at very high risk. Coronary artery calcium score, on the other hand, is a very quick scan without contrast. I don't have to be NP, nothing else. I don't have to oral or IV contrast. Just go and get it scanned. Very low radiation, and it can tell us something about my risk in someone who is interested in further risk stratifying, which we'll talk more about later. Everyone's concerned that you're uh, violating HIPAA on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to jail for violating HIPAA <laughs> on myself. I'm actually, Jayco is already in the building. I sense their presence. It was like a perturbation in the in the force like millions of rational people suddenly die shannon kincaid says i've never seen such healthy lungs you see you're actually getting about 800 texts to watch this at once you know all of these radiology texts i love it we have 800 different opinions in the room i'm just glad they didn't scan the crotch you know what i'm saying because then you would have seen an outlier if you know what i mean i'm not going to say on what side um, oh look at that look at that pulmonary vasculature yeah. So I have been exposed to coccidiomycosis as a youth growing up in the Central Valley, and so I'm sure that I've just got horrible interstitial lung disease. Actually, <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> oh, that's, that's surprising, Dr. Mike. But you do have an alien in there. Oh, an alien. Well, that's See, like I said. No, I told you, my teratoma. There is now proof. There's now proof. Oh, wow. Are you talking about the alien called Carina? <laughs> <laughs> There it is. So uh, Anthony wants to know if your insurance covers this test because I thought he says I thought they had deemed it unnecessary. Yeah. So Danielle, do you know the answer about the insurance coverage, or does it depend? I believe it depends on risk factors, symptoms. Yeah. Uh, we are able to check for authorization through your insurance if your doctor sends a referral over to us. Yeah. So it's worth trying, but the the key thing is you have to make sure you're doing it appropriately. So actually. Uh, an insurance manager might be in the right by saying Logan doesn't need this scan, right? Very easy. Uh, because because you're perfect, Logan, in Thank every you. way. I know. And the thing is, do you do you have a sense of what the cost is off the bat, or just I do not. I no have worries. no idea. They no don't worries. trust me with that information. They don't trust me with that information. <laughs> so we're going to talk more about this in a separate show because I think it's very important because you're looking at the cost benefit analysis. Should insurance cover it? And there's a lot of data on coronary artery calcium, but there's a lot of data on a lot of screening tests. And the big picture is sometimes screening for asymptomatic people is not a good idea because if you have a false positive, you end up working it up with very invasive tests that can cause harm without any benefit. So the reason I'm doing it, I've already told you why. First of all, I wanna teach you guys. Second of all, I'm curious for myself what my baseline coronary artery calcium is because I'm gonna be doing a lot of self testing on myself in terms of diet and things like that along with you guys to try to learn about what's going on with me. So for me, this is a decent answer based on what I want, my hopes, dreams, and fears, right? But maybe if Dr. Mike were saying, well, otherwise if I were just seeing you objectively, it may not be a, the right test because you don't have a lot of risk factors. So, what do we got, Dr. Mike? Well, the good news. I'm dying. Yeah. Because well, that would be I'll, good news. Well, I think you're gonna live. Oh, no. So, too bad. The bad news is I'm 44 years old. I hate seeing that in writing. It hurts. <laughs> That's, that gives me chest pain. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is your coronary score is zero. Oh, yeah, suck it. <laughs> you hear me? Everybody who's like, you eat a high-fat, low-carb diet, you're going to be riddled with coronary disease. Well, I've only been doing it for three years. But you know what? That's reassuring. Why? I well, mean, well, the good news is... Uh oh I mean, bad news. No, the good news is we don't identify any calcified plaque. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is we can't see non-calcified plaque. Ah. So that soft plaque that you could be brewing from all those tacos, <laughs> it could still be in there. We don't see it. Yeah. But the good news is, because we don't see any calcification, you, you imply that there's probably no soft plaque in there. But that might not be the case. Okay, first of all, I'm a little resentful, Dr. Mike, that you as a radiologist speak about coronary risk and plaque more eloquently than many primary care doctors and hospitalists. Um, what he's referring to is very important, which is, oh, thank you. Some of the <laughs> this variables, Ceiling time, Heinrich. Variables Ceiling of light. Um, Thank you. A lot of the plaque that ultimately causes trouble may not be calcified. It's an, a thickening of the intima, the lining of the blood vessel, that becomes ulcerated and inflamed. And when it Sorry. ruptures, a lot of blood clot forms and you get this cascade of events that leads to a heart attack. Sometimes you don't see that. Calcium, though, is a lot of times associated with those plaques. 
Not always. And this scan will miss the plaques where it isn't calcified. So is it a perfect scan? No. But it is quite sensitive, especially in intermediate risk people or higher risk people for coronary disease. It may not be as specific. So you may see calcification, but that may not mean you have a 50% or greater stenosis or blockage of your, of your heart vessel. So the test, and we're still learning about this test because it's relatively new, but it's a non-invasive way of studying this. And when you compare it to things like nuclear perfusion scans, and stress echocardiogram, that's where you get some interesting stuff where maybe this is a way we can screen some populations. Maybe it's interesting to see. Also, do serial repeat exams make any sense? And I don't know, I don't think serial exams are recommended, or at right. least at this point, I don't think anyone is, is truly aware of whether there's any benefit that's for right. doing that. That's right. And, and that's exactly what my research on it was saying. I feel like an anti-vaxxer. Well, I read on the <laughs> internet, Dr. Mike, that, so what, what, what the consensus is, is that looking at serial exams so far, we just don't have enough data to show that it helps. One interesting trial they did was looking at uh, the use of statins in people with very high cholesterols and high coronary calcium scores. So I have a zero, which is lucky, but if I had something like a 200 or 300 or 400, a lot of calcium, they gave statins and they aggressively lowered cholesterol and what they found is some change and improvement in the coronary calcium score but it was a mixed data set and there were two different trials and so the question is can't why why would you even care what your coronary calcium score is what are you going to do with that information and here's an answer if you change your lifestyle if you exercise if you quit smoking if you control your diabetes which is a huge risk for coronary disease if you take your statin religiously, if it's prescribed to you, if you take an aspirin, if it's prescribed to you, or maybe you start an aspirin, if it's prescribed to you, would you do that more religiously if you knew you had potential risk from having calcium in your vessels, which is a, a marker of potential coronary disease in many people? You might, and there was some data that they actually looked at this and found people were a little more adherent with their statins if they had a coronary calcium score that was positive. And so, could it be a motivator? The other question is, if you are already at high risk, you have horrible diabetes, you're a smoker, you have high cholesterol, you have family history, you have hypertension, why even do this study? Because you're gonna find out something that you already know, that it's positive, or if it's negative, you might say, well, I might still have that type of plaque that Dr. Mike says won't show up on the scan. So the scan has no utility. There's no purpose to doing the scan. So whenever you order tests, whether it's for yourself or for patients, you always have to think, what am I gonna do with this result? Is it gonna change management? Is it gonna actually improve outcomes? And if it isn't, probably best not to, to, to choose the test. Um, other thoughts, Dr. Mike? Well, some of the other options we have that's more invasive than CT uh, calcium scoring is, is CT angiography. Right. Which is something that we're doing now with the, with the multi-detection CT scanners is we can actually do a coronary angiogram without having to stick a tube up your crotch. Right. So, you know what, uh, it's, it's an option for healthier patients. Uh, the ones that have, let's say, intermediate risk factors who you think don't have really significant coronary disease but are very symptomatic. Hmm. So, uh, it's something that we're offering to a lot of people that, uh, you know what, it's, it's, it's a viable option. It's only getting better as technology gets better. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's, if that's something you're offering to your patients or... You know, let, let me grab this for a second, Logan, because I think... Um, what I think is that when you're talking about screening for coronary disease, it's a, it, just researching this on a, on a regular basis is so frustrating because there's so much mixed data. Do you run people on a treadmill and do an echo? Do you run people on a treadmill and do an EKG? Do you run people on a treadmill and do a nuclear study to see right. functionally is their heart affected by actual blood loss, like blood uh, starvation, ischemia? And the answer depends. It depends on what your pretest likelihood is of having heart disease. Exactly. And then what's the risk of the procedure? So an angiogram, like we do in the old in the old school, we inject, we put a catheter in your groin or in your neck or in your um, radio artery and we fish it into your blood vessel and we inject contrast which has iodine which can has a small risk of hurting your kidneys we give you radiation which is actually much more than the radiation I got that here. is correct um, about 15 times or so if I'm correct and 
you could potentially find the gold standard and see that there's something there. But the question is, if your risk is low, does it really matter? Now, Dr. Mike's saying, if you can do it by CAT scan without a lot of the invasive component, you still have to use contrast. Oh, absolutely. And you can look at it that way. Maybe that's an answer for certain patients. Maybe if you're screening acutely in the emergency department and you have to look on the data, is this a faster, easier way to do it? Most people say no because you want to be able to intervene too if, if you do it. But again, it's a, it's a work in progress. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's something that we can offer. The, the risk of, of CT coronary angiography is, is very, very low. And aside from the risks of, of contrast allergies, mm. there's essentially no risk. And you're right, the, the radiation exposure is increased, but we've been decreasing the amount of radiation we give the patients with CT over the years, and it's, it's becoming safer and safer. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's risk and benefit. Do you want us to move in the light? You guys yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> We're, we're like standing in the dark. But you got to understand, okay, who are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with an internist? Are we dealing with a surgeon? No, we're dealing with a radiologist. You think we, they like light? They like the dark. They like the dark. Like I know vampires. my wife is that way. Exactly. I'm always turning on lights, and my wife's like, click, 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 click. <laughs> turning them off. I'm like, this isn't the reading room. This is my life, girl. Um, so so that, that's very, it's a very helpful way to think about it. And with someone like me that was relatively sort of low intermediate risk, this study actually provides me some data because it says, okay, I'm starting with a clean coronary calcium score. Now, there was some data that within five years, that score can change for the worse, particularly if you have diabetes or you're a smoker. So it doesn't give you, especially if you're in those groups, it doesn't give you a clean bill of health forever. It gives you a short-term sense of where you are, and it can help you think about, well, like, do I start a statin for my LDL being elevated? I might not. Do I go on an aspirin? I might not. And so it does help me understand a little bit better what to do with myself, which it means it was a test worth doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to thank you. No, thank you. For, for not diagnosing the huge lung cancer that I was convinced I had. <laughs> and no junk. And no, no minimal junk, junk in, my, in my trunk. And, uh, and I guess I want to thank everybody here. Guys, Steinberg uh, Diagnostic Imaging has come through for the dog. And we, we will not forget it. And next up, we are going to do a cystourethrogram on these two to see exactly how plugged up their prostates are. Because believe me... I have stood at a urinal next to this guy. Oh, we're going to do it. And also a colonoscopy on Z, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll give me some it. thumbs up if you want a colonoscopy on Z. I'm not 50. Because we'll get a camera that goes right up the colon. The like, we can make that happen. Logan's a technical mastermind, okay? I'll just shove a camera up there. <laughs> Straight up, see. You guys don't understand. I go to I go to clubs to get colos for fun. It's like a fetish of mine, all right? Just understand that. Anyways, any parting words of wisdom, you guys? Uh, Ryan Newhoffel says, hey man, the viewers are down to 600 and dropping fast. Stop with all that science talk and take your shirt off, see? <laughs> yeah. Take it off, man. Unbutton it. Come on. <laughs> I love you guys. We're going to talk more about this later in a special show about coronary risk. Thank you for joining me for getting a CAT scan. Hit share, hit like. Say thanks to Steinberg uh, Diagnostic Imaging and Dr. Mike uh, Yamaguchi, or the Gooch as I call him. Gooch. The Gooch! <laughs> and Danielle and the crew. And let's give a shout out to all my rad techs who hold it down like every day and get no credit except from people who know and we know. CPAC, we are out. Thank you. Peace.